everyone, I'm Kevin, along with Noel's Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's Arctic Assault Trooper, the 1993 Iceberg, sometimes known as Balcor Figure Number 3, and also known as the second version of the beloved 1986 character. Now, Iceberg does not make any cartoon appearances or Marvel Comic Run appearances in this second version of his outfit. However, he makes his first appearance in comic book form in this Marvel published mini comic, which were randomly placed in these Balakor figures. Sometimes I'll see the Balakor version of Iceberg being listed as version number three instead of two. I think some listers are actually confusing two matters. One, he is Balakor figure number three. That is just his number within the Balakor series. And there was a figure between the 1986 version and this figure. However, that is a mail-away version, which came with a different rifle than the 1986 version, which is basically saying that the mail-away is just a variant of the 1986 version. If you look at Iceberg version 2's accessories first, and as you can see, he comes with a lot of accessories, as do many of the 1993 figures, which came with a sprue frame with generically molded weapons on them, which you had to punch out. However, Iceberg here does have a few very interesting and unique parts to him, so we'll take a look at his missile launcher first, another staple of Balcor figures. Many of the 1993 figure missile launchers were recolored and reused for different characters. However, Iceberg's is actually unique. It was never reused again. Very interesting details on it, like this, I guess, shoulder brace? has some fur line detail as well as the tip of the barrel. I guess this goes along with his this being like an Arctic only device. Also a very strange detail is this molding on the side here which almost looks like the typical dumbbell peg which you would see on vehicles where you would attach a missile to. However that's not the case here. It doesn't really fit anything that I have but it's very strange. It looks so much like a dumbbell peg from a vehicle. Anyway you have your typical trigger on the back here and the missile is already loaded in, so you just fire it off by pushing forward and off it goes. And this is what the missile looks like. It came with two of these missiles for this missile launcher. These four weapons are the generically molded items on the sprue frame, which are shared with a lot of different G.I. Joe figures and can be recolored or even in white plastic and belong to other characters. However, they were first molded for earlier versions of characters such as this wrapped up pistol and wrapped up submachine gun were originally from a 1988 Blizzard figure. The machete was originally from a 1988 Muskrat figure and the knife was originally from a 1988 Hit and Run figure. Now normally what was molded on the sprue frame with the generic weapons was an equally generic battle stand for the figures molded in the same color. However, Iceberg version 2 never came with a proper battle stand. Instead, he came with this jet snowboard. According to the itemized list on the back of the packaging on the file cart, it's a jet powered snowboard with tracking systems. Very interesting. And just like a lot of snowboards in the G.I. Joe line, it only comes with a peg for one foot. And unfortunately, that means that he can only stand in one direction. Nice little dashboard detail here. And the tiny little jet on the back here. On the bottom, however, is where things get interesting because there's a G.I. Joe logo displayed here. And this thing has a variation. The version that I have here is what I believe to be the intended look of the G.I. Joe logo on the snowboard. In other words, you can see that the G faces the front of the snowboard. However, there are variants where the logo was reversed. In other words, the G is pointing towards the back end or the jet portion of the snowboard. But the ones with the G facing the other way seem to be molded very sloppily. There's very little room between the letters and even the disturbed snow which surrounds the G.I. Joe logo seems very soft and very flat. Neither version of the snowboard seems to be harder to find than the other. 
I'm really surprised at myself at how much I like the look of Iceberg version 2 here, despite the fact that I've gone on record on my 1988 Balforce 2000 Vector Jet video of how much I don't like the color combination of white and yellow. However, I think on Iceberg here it really works because they've interlaced that yellow with darker colors, very complementary colors here. Now, looking at the figure, I'll be actually be using the bottom portion of his file card as a reference because like a lot of 1993 figures, it itemizes not only his accessories, but some of the things that were just molded onto the figure. So that's a rather good thing. Looking at his head first, you can see that he has a proper ski mask. Not like the balaclava that Beachhead normally wears. This thing has actually a separation from the top portion or the toque portion and the rest of his face mask. A really lovely camo on him, sort of a mossy oak look. That's not a look that you see very often on G.I. Joe's and actually gives a very winter, very autumn and winter look to his jacket. Rather unfortunate that the mossy oak pattern isn't continued down onto this waist portion because you can see where his jacket actually would have ended right here. And that's just below the waist portion. So that's rather unfortunate that it isn't continued on there. Some more interesting facts from the bottom of the file card is this odd looking sack, which to be honest, kind of looks like an old black powder sack, but is actually called a non-freezable liquid survival sack. So I guess that's where he keeps his water. You still have to keep hydrated, even in the freezing cold, I suppose. He has some very interesting detail on the tops of his gloves here, because these are supposed to be fur-lined, armor-plated gloves. Very nice. Always a nice little badass touch to have a little knife strapped to your arm there. And a very nice pattern on his boots here. Nice little pop of green here which complements the missile launcher, strangely enough. And these are his Inuit boots with ice traction soles. This is how I've been displaying Iceberg version 2 so far, just as a snowboarding missile man. It's rather unfortunate that Hasbro didn't elect to have some type of storage space for all the other accessories, as a lot of 1993 figures come with a ton of accessories which they can't hold all together or store anywhere. And now to compare the old versus the new, here is the first version of Iceberg from 1986. And as you can see, the original Iceberg did not come with a lot. He had an elaborate paint job, but at the expense of accessories. He only came with this one giant M60 and didn't even come with an ammo belt or ammo box to attach to it. He doesn't even have ammo molded onto the figure. Unlike the new version, which does have twin ammo belts, and yet he only came with a submachine gun. Very interesting. I wonder if they did that just to make up for what happened originally. Oddly enough, Iceberg here was the first of three Arctic-themed G.I. Joes for the Balakor line. The second, which was already reviewed by me, is Snowstorm. And the third was a new version of Frostbite, Frostbite version 3. Back when I had done my Snowstorm review, I had wondered why there were so many of these Arctic-themed G.I. Joes just for the Balcor line alone. Normally, you'd only have one per series. And on top of all that, not only do we have a lot of G.I. Joes here, but we have no Cobra equivalents to this. We did have the Ice Snake, the Cobra vehicle, but no figures for them to fight against. At least I have a partial answer in the form of the uh, cards themselves, because when I took a look at them, I did notice one thing. Iceberg here is Balcor figure number three. Snowstorm is Balcor figure number 12. And Frostbite here is Balcor figure number 20. That means that these figures were actually spaced out. These were actually different waves, which of course reminded me that Balakor was an extremely long line. Normally you'd have about 12 to 17 figures per series. Balakor had 36. So these were actually spaced out into three different waves. And you can see on the box of the cards, there are different figure rosters for every card here. So these were definitely in different waves, 
meant for a different audience each time one of these was released. Well, I just finished saying that the 1993 Arctic G.I. Joes for the Balakor line don't have direct Cobra bad guys to fight against. That's not exactly true for Iceberg version 2. If you go back two years to 1991, we have the Snow Serpent version 2s. And these guys have a lot in common with each other, such as the shoulder mounted missile launchers, as well as the jet powered snowboards. The snowboards even have the pegs on the same sides, meaning that they can only face in the same direction on these boards. Normally, I let you, the viewer, read the file card at your leisure at the end of the review, but there is at least one thing in the text that I wanted to point out, and that is his brand new serial number. 1-800-BRRR-93. Well, somebody was definitely having some fun that day. As you can see from the original, 1986 Iceberg file card, that was obviously a change meant from this. You'll notice that the card artwork coloration differs greatly from the figure produced. And that has led me and a lot of other collectors to speculate that the original idea for Iceberg version 2 was for him to be into a subline which got cancelled. Belcor was actually a line which actually had a lot of other uh, cancelled sublines, such as the DEF and Eco Warriors second series and third series respectively, those were cancelled and got put into Balakor. So I thought maybe this figure was supposed to be in one of those two or maybe a third line, which we never got to see. Very interesting that the green is actually fairly complementary with his uh, missile launcher, but we don't get to see that. Only the green on the guy's uh, boots. But you also see this bright orange snowboard, which quite frankly, I'm glad that they dropped and went with white for the rest of his accessories. Interestingly, in the Brazil release of Iceberg version 2, you can see that they actually changed the card artwork to reflect the action figure more closely. However, in Brazil, he is actually considered a Cobra. Very interesting that not only is he a Cobra, but Brazil's Blizzard was also a Cobra as well. I'm sensing a theme which Brazil doesn't like. And here's a Chinese knockoff of Iceberg version 2. And yes, this is absolutely an unapproved knockoff and not supposed to be some type of domestic version of the figure. You can see that they've actually painted him green to match the card artwork and not the other way around for Brazil. And his unique missile launcher is even white plastic to match all his other accessories. If you're looking for an Iceberg version 2 on the aftermarket, it is very easy to find this figure complete with all of its accessories and for a very reasonable price. In fact, I will actually have to say that you can probably find him completely sealed on his card for still a very reasonable price. A lot of the Balakor figures really don't go for as much as earlier figures, and that's rather a shame because I think in some cases, People are kind of blinded by the amount of accessories that they come with, especially the missile launchers. The spring-loaded missile launchers are kind of those items which really polarize the G.I. Joe collecting community. Some people like them, some people don't. Personally, I kind of like this one because it's not really that big or obnoxious. It's actually rather small compared to other missile launchers from the same line. One thing that I might actually do for this figure is, while I like it with the missile launcher, those ammo belts are giving me a good idea to actually swap out his smaller accessories for the 1986 version's M60. So while I might give that large rifle to this guy, I might actually wind up giving the smaller accessories to the 1986 version, which I think complement him a bit more.
and you will see them recolored for other figures, even in white plastic for other figures as well. So they are shared with a lot of different figures in the G.I. Joe line. But they started off life with different figures previously, such as this wrapped up. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.